Hello, my YouTube friends and family. It's Erica again. <laughs> I'm going to try this again. I had a new mic because I know someone um, on my last video said they couldn't hear me. And there's been a few people it was hard to hear. So I did get a, uh, a microphone. And I guess the echo was up too far. So I'm not real uh, tech savvy. <laughs> But I hope you all had a blessed week and a great weekend, and I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead. Um, I do want to thank you for tuning in on my channel. I do have an awesome word. If you didn't hear the one before, I did delete it because, like I said, the echo was way too loud. Um, so I'm going to release it now and re-record it for you all. Um, and the word was... You're bigger than what you think you are. And this goes along with a dream that I had two days ago. And it's a quick word, but it's a very encouraging word. And I know that it will resonate and be confirmed by the Lord with some of you all in the season that you're in. So in the dream two days ago I had, I was in a large office building and there were a couple women in there and I was trying on a jacket of one of the ladies there and it was, it fit me, but it was kind of tight. It was a little bit tight. And then I looked over and I saw her jeans and her jeans had these pearls and glitter and it was shiny and you know I like glitter I like sparkly things and uh, rhinestones so I wanted to try them on and um, so she gave them to me and I was gonna put them on and getting ready to try them on and I noticed they were a size 910 which is really small for me <laughs> I am double that basically um, and when I woke up from the dream, I heard the Lord say, Erica, you're bigger than what you think you are. And this is a word for many of you. You know, we get into these seasons and, and these times. I know when I was a younger Christian um, a few years ago, you know, I saw all these ladies that were preaching and they had the high heels, they had beautiful dresses and all awesome jewelry and cars. And I was like, wow. You know, I'd like to do that. You know, I want to do that. But, you know, God is saying in this hour, I have commissioned you. You have the heart. You men and women have the heart and you're bigger than what you're settling for, what you think you need. You know, a lot of people settle for and they conform to to be inside of a building, you know, just sitting on the back pew. And God has made you for such a time as this to be out, to be out in the world, not just for four walls, to be out in the world. And, you know, there are people out there that are waiting for you to step into your destiny. Hallelujah. And, you know, when God showed me these things and, and spoke to these things to me, um, he reminded me of a few stories in the Bible. One of them was Moses. You know, Moses, when, when God was going to use Moses, he was like, uh, no, you know, um, I don't speak eloquently. That's me. <laughs> I don't speak eloquently. And, you know, I, I stutter, I, you know, I stumble my words, whatever, what have you. But, you know, God knew what he placed in him. He knew what he commissioned and his mission was, and he knew Moses's heart. And, you know, Moses went on and did mighty things. And, you know, the dream also reminded me of Gideon. And, you know, the angel of the Lord came to Gideon and he and he called him a mighty man of valor. And Gideon was like, I don't know who you're talking to. You can't be talking to me. I'm the smallest in my family. And, you know, we come from a poor family. And um, can I tell you, it doesn't matter. God, it don't matter what you wear. It doesn't matter how poor you are. God sees your heart. Now, we can't talk about putting on other people's clothes without the story of David, right? I mean, that's the quintessential right there is David. And, you know, David, when he went into the valley and they were all ready, the army was ready to take on or, you know, they were carrying down of Goliath. And, and David's like questioning, like, what, what do we get? What's the man get that takes down Goliath and his brother, you know, uh, got jealous and, and got upset with him and he, he called him prideful and this snack David wasn't prideful he wasn't boasting in himself he just had faith in his God he knew what God 
could do. And, you know, there are going to be times when, you know, your family persecutes you, persecutes you. you, you know, it could be your flesh family, your blood family, like your mother, your father, your your children, your sister, brother, or your, you know, it could be your sister and brothers in Christ and, you know, people that you really care for. But they see the favor of God upon you and what he's commissioned you to be. See, it didn't matter how much Saul had. Saul had everything. He had gold. He had jewels. He had the kingdom and women and this and that. But that didn't get him the win. See, it was David, his heart. He was made for the big thing. Hallelujah. He was commissioned for the big thing. And see, David was proactive in taking down Goliath. See, Goliath, he had the big sword and he was up, you know, he would have fought up close and personal and you'd have to be reactive to that. See, David was back here. He shot it back here. He saw it coming. He knew from afar, hallelujah, and he went ahead and took him out. He was proactive, and that's how we have to be. In everything that we do, we have to be proactive. You know, we fight from a stance of victory, my friends, not a stance of lack, not a stance of defeat. In Christ, we have the victory. And, you know, it also reminded me, you know, David did put on Saul's armor, right? Everybody, you know, some of that part, if you read into it, a lot of people don't really read into that part, but he did try his armor on. You know, there may be times where you go try somebody else's shoes on. You you know, they may be up preaching or they may be doing this or that and you go and you, you know, you try it out, but you'll see. If it's not if if it's not commissioned for you, if that's not your mission, it's not going to fit you. You know when when Saul put David's armor on, or Saul put his armor on David, he was like, "No, this I can't fight like this. This ain't going to work." He took it off, and it doesn't matter how big the armor is. It doesn't matter. It was David and his heart. It was his heart, and and you know there's going to be times that. People are not going to believe in you, and they're not going to believe in what you carry. Hallelujah. But God, right? You know, the people, it took David three times to be anointed before the people even accepted him. You know, Samuel, you know, was in like in mourning. Because, you know, God was basically told him, you know, I'm going to use, uh, you're going to anoint another man. You're going to anoint, you know, this man, not not Saul. And, you know, Samuel was, was in mourning and God was like, how long are you going to mourn for this? It doesn't matter what the people want. It doesn't matter how high their shoes are, how fancy they are, hallelujah, what kind of dress they wear, what are they, whatever they drive, it doesn't matter. If they throw the biggest parties, if they have the biggest church, big mega millions, it doesn't matter. Because God has commissioned you for bigger. Don't settle for mediocre. Don't settle for places that are mediocre. You're settling. Don't settle for people. God has something bigger, bigger for you. You know, I uh, I had a dream uh it's been, I don't know if I shared it with my other one, but it's been like uh, three, three, four years ago. You know, um, it was a few churches that I had went to and visited, and there were some ladies in the stream. They had the long dresses. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to wear it, that's perfectly fine. You know, that's not me, but, you know, they were that. And, and in this stream, I was standing in front of a mirror, and they were putting their big dresses on me and their makeup, and it just, it didn't fit. And I said in the dream, I said, this, this doesn't fit. You know, you got to know who you are. You know, I'm out and about in the rehabs and the jails and, um, you know, traveling state to state, doing this, doing that. You know, there are a lot of times that, you know, I'm on the streets in tennis shoes and jeans. There's a lot of times that, you know, um, I've got dress pants on. You know, sometimes I wear skirts, but when I'm down, you know, um, with deliverance or this or that, you know, God knows our heart. It doesn't matter what they wear, you know. Don't look at the hand and want to be a hand if God has commissioned you to be a, to be the foot, right? You know, a lot of times we get into where we want to do everything. We spread ourselves thin. And you're definitely not going to get anywhere but tired and worn out. Focus, focus, focus on where God has you specifically, what your mission is. You know, let the hand be the hand. Let the finger be the finger. 
And let's just all come together as a body. God is calling for you for unity in this hour, right? This is the time of the faceless Calvary. You know, it's not going to be big names and, and you know, uh, the the famous this and that, you know, whoever it may be, the most money, the glittering, this, you know, whatever, the biggest churches, it's not going to be that. It's, you know, it's the faceless Calvary. It's the remnant that's coming in. Hallelujah. And, and you know, we are part of that. We're part of what God is doing. You know, the world may not know your name, but I'm telling you tonight that heaven sure does. Heaven sure knows. Hallelujah. And they're backing you up and they're cheering you on this hour. So I just want to encourage you tonight. Go forward. Think bigger. God has something bigger for you. Don't keep trying to put on those other pants that are too small or other shoes. It's a season and a time. You know, this March, I heard the Lord say, evolve. That was the word that I got from the Lord. It's time to evolve out of even our our own old clothes. It's time to put on to mature and put on the new clothes and the new places and the new mantles and the talents and and gifts that God wants to take you up to. It's time to evolve. I love you guys. You all have a blessed week and we will talk soon.